Yeah. So, suppose we take the set of all 0 divisors of uh, a ring. If this is only 0, then such rings are called integral domains. If the only 0 divisor of So, first we should say let A be a commutative ring with identity with identity if the only 0 divisor of A is 0, then A is called an integral domain. Right. So, we have uh, I mean almost all of the uh, examples that we were looking at they are all integral domains. Uh, so, uh, q, r, c, z all of them. What about this set? Can we can you say something about this set? Is this an integral domain? Why it is not an integral domain? Yeah. Can you can you give me an example where this is not an integral domain? Sorry. Taking s equals to take s equal to r. Okay, fine. And yeah. Sorry? Yeah. So, fine. So, you want to say construct this yes. kind of functions. Right? Do you understand the uh, difference? So, if you take, so this is your, uh, if this is f and if this is g, then f times g is 0. Neither this is f and this is g, then f g is 0, but neither f nor g is 0. I mean you, you do not really have to go that far if you just take s to be two point set right and uh, take f f a to be 1, f of b to be 0, uh, g of a to be 0 and g of b to be 1, then f g is always 0, but neither f nor is, uh, g is 0. So, this is not an integral domain. So, f s is not an integral domain. Uh, another important examples uh, class of examples in this direction that will you will see uh, often is polynomials ring of polynomials over integral domains. If A is, is an integral domain then what can you say about A x? This is also an integral domain. So, this is you know the, the 
proof is easy, one has to uh, look at product like this A naught plus A 1 x plus etcetera A n x power n B naught plus B m x power m. Suppose this is 0, okay. we want to say that one of them is 0. Suppose both of them are non-zero. That means I can get. Suppose I have okay f f x times g x is zero. Okay, f x is non-zero, g x is non-zero. Then I can get an n and an m such that a n the leading coefficient of this f x, this is non-zero, and this is non-zero. Now, the product is 0. When, when do you say polynomial is 0? When each coefficient is 0, which means a n b m is 0, but our assumption is that neither a n is 0 with. So, here with a n not equal to 0, b m not equal to 0, but our assumption is that a is an integral domain. This will imply that a n is 0 or b m is 0. That is a contradiction. So, therefore, we see that if a is an integral domain, then so is a x. Now, if A is A is a unit implies there exists B such that A B is equal to 1. So, there this B is denoted by uh, B is called inverse of A. and denoted by A inverse. First simple observation again, again comes from your uh, uh, first course in algebra. An ideal I is uh, ideal I is equal to is the whole ring. if and only if i contains a unit. So, this is in our situation that we are considering commutative rings with identity. Okay. So, i is equal to a if and only if there exists a unit a in i. Of course, this easily implies this, but if A contains a unit, which means you can multiply by its inverse and then multiply with all elements of A. Now, this uh, brings a nice characterization of uh, fields. let A be a commutative ring with identity. Then the following are equivalent. Henceforth, I will be simply writing it like this the following are equivalent will be denoted like this. A is a field the only ideals of A are 0 and A. 
any homomorphism from A to a ring B is injective. So, uh, yeah, any to a non zero ring. So, as I mentioned earlier, whenever I say a ring, in our context it will be commutative ring with high identity. I will not always repeat it, but uh, okay. So, can we see 1 implies 2 A is a field? If A is a field, you want to say the only ideal is 0 and uh, the whole ring. So, if if I take an ideal i, take a non zero, suppose it is non zero ideal, take any non zero element there, it says that our assumption is that A is a field, therefore it is a unit, which means i contains a unit, therefore it is the whole. So, any non zero element, uh, non zero ideal has to be whole. Ring. Is an ideal, then there exists a unit in I and that implies I is A. So, any non zero ideal is the whole ring. Now, how do you prove 2 implies 3? The only ideals of A are 0 and A. You want to show that any homomorphism from A to B any uh, again any non zero homomorphism any non zero homomorphism from a to a non zero ring b is injective yeah you look at kernel phi uh, so i have suppose phi is from a to b be a non zero homomorphism then kernel phi is an ideal of A. Now, kernel phi has only two options. Kernel phi can be either 0 or the whole of A, but can it be the whole of A? Because we are assuming that phi is a non zero ring homomorphism therefore kernel phi phi is non zero kernel phi has to be equal to zero so that implies phi is injective and how do you imply uh, prove 3 implies 1 you are given that you define any homomorphism non zero homomorphism from A to any non zero ring B, then it has to be injective. You need to prove that B is a field, uh, A is a field. So, A is given to be a commutative ring with identity. What you need to prove is that every non zero element has an inverse. So, let us start with an element. Let A be a non zero, X be a non zero element in A. I want to show that X is a unit. How do you show that X is a unit here? What are the information given? I mean, if you have, what are the hypotheses? If you can define a homomorphism involving X, then we can get hold of it. Can you think of a homomorphism like that? Yeah. Yeah. So, if see if this is 
if x is not a unit then then this is a proper ideal. Gen ideal generated by x has to be a proper ideal because this is not a unit implies for any y in A x y cannot be 1 or x y cannot be a unit. So, therefore, the in this ideal you cannot have a unit. So, therefore, this has to be a proper ideal. Now, define a map from. So, this is a this is a proper ideal implies that this is non-zero. So, I have a ring homomorphism the natural map ring homomorphism from A to A mod x and what is the kernel of this homomorphism? Ideal generated by x. Now, again there are two options we are saying that it is injective sorry our hypothesis is that any homomorphism is injective, but then this has a kernel unless this is 0 this has a kernel. Therefore, uh, so consider the homomorphism consider the natural homomorphism phi from A to A mod x, then kernel of phi is equal to x. By hypothesis it is injective therefore, x has to be 0 that is a contradiction. See we are we have assumed that x is neither 0 nor unit it is a contradiction x is 0 this since phi is injective x is 0 which is a contradiction. to our assumption that x is non-zero. So, therefore, we have made an assumption which is wrong. So, after this we have made an assumption that x is not a unit. So, therefore, this is wrong here x has to be unit this implies x is a unit and that implies a is a field. So, now this characterizes fields. So, now let us look for you know slightly bigger class of rings for that we require another tool which are called prime ideals. and maximal ideals. So, again our uh, standard assumption is that A is a commutative ring with identity A be a commutative ring with identity For the definition of prime ideals you do not really require ring to be commutative with identity, but for uh, some properties we need that. An ideal i uh, of A is said to be a prime ideal if I guess you have seen the definition if yeah yeah if uh, for a comma b belongs to a with a b in i either a belong to i or 
b belong to i this is obviously satisfied by the whole ring right and it is it is an ideal but we are not bother about the whole ring when we are studying about prime ideals we avoid the whole ring and say that prime ideal if i is a proper ideal of a and these conditions are satisfied okay or in other words a proper ideal is said to be prime ideal if for any product ab belonging to a uh, belonging to i either a is in i or b is in i can you give me some simple examples of prime ideals So, P z in z some uh, slightly better in z do you know only this kind of prime ideals in z in z z in z do you know only this type of prime ideals in z by ideal ideal denoted is x 0 0 right 0 is a prime ideal in z but the i should be proper ideal yes i is a proper ideal right in z 0 is a proper ideal right it's properly contained in a so this that's this is very important that you know this is indeed a prime ideal in fact can you make a more general statement Uh, is zero prime ideal of every ring okay. integral domain integral domain because a product has to be is zero if and only if one of them is zero so therefore we should say uh, of note zero is a prime ideal of of a if and only if a is an integral domain okay so this is uh, try to write down a you know proof it's very easy but you should uh, write down so uh, some more examples of prime ideals can you give me an example of a prime ideal in let's say uh, in rx ideal generated by x more x comma x comma 2 will this be a prime ideal in rx yes no yes so is it unique what can you say about two two is a two is a unit in rx right it's a unit in r therefore it's a unit in rx therefore what will this be the whole of rx so this is not a prime ideal so can you give me some other examples of prime ideals in rx can you think of an ideal uh say okay other some other linear generated by linear polynomials can you think of another example with generated by linear polynomials not only x e to the power plus 1 well okay yeah x square plus 1 
is this a prime ideal? Why? Why is this a prime ideal? Uh, it's like this is isomorphism. Huh? Well, that is. Uh, yeah. No, we can say that it's fine, but this is. You'll have to justify that. Ultimately, it comes down to one particular property of Rx. So, we are saying Rx, so Rx to C, this is what uh, you are mentioning, like you can define a map phi of x going to i or phi of p x going to p of i and the kernel is generated by x square plus 1. Why is the kernel generated by x square plus 1? kernel of p x, uh, kernel of phi is generated by x square plus 1. Why is it so? Yeah, I mean my question is why? x square plus 1 certainly belongs to the kernel, right? I, I can understand. So, this inclusion is fine. Why is it true that you take any element of kernel phi it is in this ideal. Yeah. So, this is what I said, this is a very particular property of R x or even more generally F x for any field, the property of uh, division algorithm, Divisional. right? This is exactly what we use. It boils down to that. See, if you take any f x here, okay, I can write this as p x times x square plus one plus r x. Okay, so, to first of all you have to say that no linear polynomials belong here, because, because A x A x plus b is in kernel implies A i plus b is 0, which means A i is equal to b, but A is real, b is real and i is complex, that is a basic property of complex numbers. So, therefore, no linear polynomial is in kernel. Now, if I take any anything bigger than to degree 2, I can write it like this with R x having degree strict p x will be non 0 and R x having strictly degree less than strictly less than uh, 2. Now, put x equal to i, you see that this is 0, this is 0, therefore, R of i is 0, but that is a linear polynomial at most of degree 1 therefore, it has to be 0. Therefore, f x belongs to. So, the it is the division algorithm that we are using here. <coughs> now, in R x can you give me more uh, prime ideals? Can you give me a prime ideal of degree 2, uh, sorry degree 3? Can you give me a prime ideal in R x of degree 3? generated by degree 3 polynomial I mean. Why? In R means if it is a, is a prime ideal R x is a PID, so it is a maximum ideal. Right hmm. It is much simpler argument. No, it has Can it has a root. Yeah, it, it has it is intermediate value theorem. If you take a degree 3 polynomial, it has a root in R therefore, it factorizes in <coughs> no. So, therefore, you cannot have uh, polynomials of uh, uh, <coughs> polynomials of degree 3 generate generating a prime ideal. So, I will uh, leave this 
find all prime ideals of Rx. Now, uh, let us move on. What would Cx? Quickly tell me what are the prime ideals of Cx? Ideal generated by x? x minus alpha. x minus alpha. 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 <coughs> so, the prime ideals alpha belongs to C. I will leave it to you to justify this. What is the reason behind it? What is the reason behind these are the only prime ideals? Fundamental theorem of algebra. C is algebraically closed, right? Is that clear to you? Every polynomial will factorize into linear factors. So, this is a PID, Cx is a PID. So, every ideal will be generated by a polynomial. If it is of degree bigger than or equal to 2, you can write it as a product of uh, two distinct polynomials. Now, it cannot be prime if these two factors one of them is not here, right. So, therefore, if it is of degree 2 or above generated I mean, an ideal is generated by a polynomial of degree 2 or above this can be split into a uh, two factors of smaller powers which are not there. So, it cannot be a prime idea. <coughs> okay. Okay, so, now, let us uh, let us move on to uh, maximal ideals. So, the name suggests what should it be <coughs> an ideal i is a maximal ideal if there exists a proper ideal, an ideal j strictly contained in A and containing I. Such that. Okay. <coughs> oh, sorry, that does not exist. <laughs> if you cannot find a proper ideal containing <coughs> a proper ideal properly containing i then i is called a maximal ideal <coughs> okay so let's make some observations first before looking into some examples uh, <coughs> Okay, uh, maybe let us uh, take up one or two examples, quick examples, uh, quick examples from the known uh, rings. Let us say Q R 0, uh, Z maximal ideals in Z, P Z. maximal ideals in Z n what are the maximal ideals of Z n is prime n is prime then Z if n is not a prime P Z n where P is a prime divisor of P Z n where P is a prime 
device error. <coughs> How do you get this? Can you think of a proof? Why is this a maximal ideal? We will come back to this. Okay. So first, uh, I mean, one can of course, in this case, it's. Uh, I mean, this is a set that is known to you. This is a set that is known to you. One can immediately uh, prove it. Okay. But there is a much simpler way to tackle this, which is more general. A tool that is more general. Uh, Again, observation or remark or note. Uh, let A be a commutative ring with identity. Okay, and <coughs> an ideal. I is a prime ideal if and only if A mod I is an integral domain. And an ideal I in a is a maximal ideal if and only if A mod I is a field. This we already saw in a slightly different manner here. <coughs> So, for this we need one more simple observation. <coughs> Suppose I have a, a, so this is sketch of the proof. If I have <coughs> uh, let phi from A to A mod I, uh, A to B bearing homomorphism. Okay. If I take an ideal here, its inverse image is an ideal here. This we saw in the last class. Now, I you know restrict it to slightly smaller class. Suppose I take a prime ideal, <coughs> be a prime ideal. Then what can you say about phi inverse of It is, it is certainly an ideal. So, the question is, is this a prime ideal? <coughs> is it? Yes. If you take a product, suppose you have A B is in this one, which means phi of A B is in P. Phi of A B is nothing but phi of A times phi of B that is in P, but P is prime. Therefore, either phi of A is in B uh, in P or phi of B is in P or in other words, A is in phi inverse of P or B is in phi inverse of P. So, therefore, this is a prime ideal. Now, do you see a proof of the first part using the observation, the note that we wrote here? 0 is prime ideal in A if and only if A is an integral domain. Now, <coughs> I start with a prime ideal. I want to say that A mod I is integral domain. Uh, so, so, 0 uh, you want to say that uh, no, here we need slightly uh, 
yeah. <coughs> if p is so if okay this is one observation this we require for the uh, converse another observation is that if i have phi from a to b i have a ring homomorphism if i take a prime ideal in a phi of the prime ideal in I mean we have seen that it need not necessarily even be an ideal, but if you put some conditions this becomes an ideal. What are the can you think of a condition for which this becomes if it is a surjective map then for any ideal i in a phi of i is an ideal in b. Now, if phi of if p is a prime ideal in a is it true that phi of p is a prime ideal in b okay so be a surjective homomorphism uh, and is a prime ideal then Can, what can you say about this? Again, let us look at I take a b belongs to phi of p, this is a uh, so therefore, I have some a 1 b 1 in a such that phi of a 1 b 1 belongs to uh, a 1 b 1 belongs to phi of a 1 b 1 belongs here, but then a 1 b 1 belongs to p therefore, a 1 belongs to p b 1 belongs to p either a 1 belongs to p or b 1 belongs to p therefore, phi of a 1 belongs to p phi of p or b 1 uh, phi of b 1 belongs to phi of p. So, therefore, this is a prime ideal. Now, we are re ready to see a complete proof of the first part. A is I start with the prime ideal, this is a, so a to a mod i. Uh, so, for the first one, a to a mod i is a ring homomorphism, surjective ring homomorphism. I start with ideal i, it is a prime ideal, therefore, its image is a prime ideal, which means its image is 0 here. 0 is a prime ideal here, therefore, this is integral domain. Okay. So, that is the first part. Now, assume phi of a mod i, uh, a, a, of a mod i is an integral domain, therefore, the 0 ideal is prime ideal here. Now, its inverse image is nothing but i, 0 is prime here therefore, its inverse image which is i is a prime ideal and that is exactly what we have to prove. Now, for the second part, i is maximal ideal if and only if a mod i is a field. For this one can use the equivalent conditions that we used earlier. Okay. So, i is maximal, suppose this is maximal ideal, if this is maximal ideal, how do you say it is a field? Yes. So, you look at this a mod i, a mod i has no non zero proper idea, which implies a mod the only ideals of a mod i. are 0 and a mod i. That means, a mod i is a field. 
Now you can just go back. If A mod i is a field, then the only ideals of A mod i are these two, which means A mod i has no non-zero proper ideals. That means there are no proper, now again we use the correspondence theorem that yeah. <laughs> we looked at yesterday. Using that, we can say that any ideal here, any ideal in this one is in 1 1 correspondence with ideals of A containing I. So, this says that there are no proper ideal containing I and contained in A, which means I is a maximal ideal. <coughs> so, this is you know ok. Now, ok. So, now let us see uh, few more examples ok. Now, can you tell me why this is uh, why P z n is maximal, why P z n is maximal? Yeah, z n mod P z n. So, here we have to use isomorphism theorem. See z n is isomorphic to z mod n z right. So, this is nothing but z mod n z modulo p z mod n z. If I I contained in J contained in A, these are ideals of A, then A mod I mod J mod I, this is isomorphic to A mod J, right, the uh, second isomorphism theorem. Again, you know, you can prove this using the first isomorphism theorem, from here send a map to A mod j, x plus i say map to x plus j, its kernel will precisely be this. Therefore, by first isomorphism theorem, this is true. So, using this star implies that z, z n mod p z n is isomorphic to z mod p z, which is a field. Okay. And you should in fact prove that any maximal ideal of z n is of this form, you cannot have any other uh, maximal ideals. Let me uh, conclude today by asking a question, identify some maximal ideals of we will come i mean start from here tomorrow